Born in Roman Gaul of provincial nobility, Plotina, wife of Emperor Trajan, was a virtuous, serious-minded woman of sober judgment, high moral standards, and intellectual capability. She was a supporter of the arts and a student of philosophy. She first traveled to Rome in AD 99 when her husband became emperor. Plotina's modern-looking hairstyle was molded from straight hair rather than curls. It was rarely emulated, except by other straight-haired Roman women. The ornatrix dressing Plotina's hair would have used period-appropriate tools similar to these. Wood or bone combs, wood or bone hair bodkins, blunt needles and woolen thread, and leaf spring scissors. The frontmost hair may have been curled with a calamistrum curling iron similar to this, but for safety reasons, I will use a modern electric curling wand of similar shape. For this interpretation of Plotina's style, the hair must first be sectioned and secured out of the way as illustrated using hair bodkins. Begin dressing the hair from the nape. Plotina wore a looped ponytail made from many small braids. Part off a horizontal subsection at the nape and divide it into small, free-hanging, three-strand braids. Braid all the way to the tips of the hair. As you near the ear level, Reserve a small section of unbraided hair behind each ear for later use. After braiding the back hair, release the central zone over the ears. Comb the hair straight up to the top of the head. Use water or oil to control flyaways. Using a blunt needle, bind this hair into a high ponytail. Leave the thread attached. From behind, thoroughly backcomb the ponytail. Keep the forward surface smooth. Now roll the teased ponytail backwards into a large barrel curl. To compress its base, Stitch the barrel curl by passing the needle through the center channel, then through the scalp hair behind the ponytail. Now fan out the curl. The back combing prevents it from splitting open. Now we've stitched the edges of the barrel curl to the scalp hair behind the ponytail. Now release the facial sections. Beginning at the ear, spiral curl small strands so that they direct away from the face. Continue curling all the way up to the center top.
At the top of this section, twist the finished curls around one another to form a tubular curl. Without stretching out the tubular curl, join its ends to the loose section of reserve hair behind the ear. Divide the combined hair into three strands, then braid it to the tips. Repeat this process on the opposite side of the head. At the nape, bind all the braids into a single ponytail using a blunt needle and thread. Leave the thread attached. Now depending on the thickness and length of the braids, wrap one or two of them around the base of the ponytail, then stitch them in place. When you're finished, clip off the thread. Now bind the tips of all the braids together using needle and thread. Leave the thread attached. Now turn the ponytail underneath and stitch the tips to the underside of the nape ponytail. This creates the characteristic loop. Once all is secure, Clip the thread and the style is complete. Platina's barrel curl hairstyle was an ingenious and prescient solution to the problem of achieving a tall yet controlled silhouette on straight hair, but this was not the only clever aspect of her hairstyle. Edging the foreheads of Platina's and many other contemporaneous female portraits may be seen bands of flat, extremely precise curls. Some advocate that these forehead bands were made from false hair, but I suggest an alternative method, that this hair could have been carefully cut, then wet curled with the aid of slender sticks made from wood or bone. In this scenario, a narrow strip along the hairline is cut so that all the hair measures approximately four inches or 10 centimeters long. Wet the cut hair and apply a viscous solution of acacia gum as a setting lotion. Beginning over one ear, wind small flat curls. Delicately pin each curl through its center using a single toothpick.
To protect the set as it dries, carefully tie a scarf around the head. Allow the hair to dry thoroughly. Now we'll comb it out. Carefully remove the scarf. And now carefully remove all of the toothpicks. At this stage, the curls are extremely firm. Some women may have preferred to wear their forehead curls in this state, as may have been the case in this anonymous portrait. For a softer finish, the hair could have been combed out, then reshaped. Comb out the curls, then mold them into a continuous flattened tube curl. Since the hold rendered by the acacia gum gel is broken by combing, these curls will be more fragile. To better hold these curls in place, I will tie a single strand of color matched thread around the head. The thread stabilizes the curls while imposing a slight indentation characteristic of these bands as depicted in Roman portraiture. Depending on the weather or personal preference, the curls could be worn with or without the thread.